prices are on the rise. I keep hearing that everywhere. So I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about that, if I've been noticing the same things in my stores, and also give you some tips, some ideas for how you can combat rising food prices, keep that grocery budget in check. These are things that we are doing ourselves, and hopefully there's something helpful for you as well. So stay tuned. All right, you guys, I got an interesting comment on one of my older videos yesterday. I posted a video about five months ago about how to eat for $10 a week. And somebody left a comment basically saying, it's too bad that these things are about a third higher cost now than they were whenever this video went up. And it made me wonder if that was truly the case. So I went to my Walmart, I needed to pick up something there anyway, and I had a look around and I was looking at some of the ingredients that I use particularly for that video and also some other things that I routinely buy. I noticed that frozen vegetables, the kind that I used in that video and that I use frequently were the same price. The cream cheese that I typically buy from there is still the same price. The soup mix, the potatoes, the bananas, those were also the same price that I had paid for them five or six months ago whenever I shopped for that video. There were really only three items that I noticed had gone up in price. One of them was flour, but flour for that particular video was on a rollback, so that was one of the reasons why I chose that ingredient for that video to make that point that flour was on sale, so it made for a fabulous ingredient to use in my meals. Flour is now back to a $1.74 for a five pound bag, but that's a pretty common price I've noticed over the past couple of years at my Walmart. The two items that I noticed had gone up pretty significantly in price were eggs and milk. And I have noticed that, but I just haven't thought much of it because those are two items that at least in my area tend to fluctuate a lot. I also hopped on over to Aldi because I wanted to take a look and see if some of the things that I routinely buy have gone up in price. And I noticed that cheese is still typically the same price as well as the whipped cream cheese that I tend to buy there. I can still buy a whole chicken for 95 cents a pound. I did notice that tortilla chips and a few canned goods like beans and tomatoes had gone up a few pennies, but nothing that seemed out of the realm of just the normal rate of inflation. I did of course notice that eggs and milk were more expensive than I had been paying a few months ago. But again, I just kind of chalked that up to the general fluctuations that I see in those two items in multiple stores all the time. So in general, I haven't seen just a huge jump in the cost of the items that I routinely buy with the exception of milk and eggs and maybe meat occasionally, although there were several meat items like ground beef and chicken that I noticed were you know, pretty close to the same price that I typically pay. Maybe we're just fortunate and it has not arrived here yet. And certainly I want to be aware of the reports that I'm hearing from other places and kind of prepare ourselves for that if it arrives. The important thing I want to start out with is don't panic. I know a lot of people might say, Mindy, you ought to go out and stock up on things while the prices are good and get your pantry stocked and everything else. But first of all, I don't have the capacity to stock multiple months worth of food in my house. And I also think that I am just delaying the inevitable. I'm not addressing the actual problem of figuring out how I'm going to be able to afford food moving forward if we do see, you know, a jump in prices. So I feel like if this is the problem that we're going to address, we basically have two ways that we can solve this problem, right? We can either increase our budget, meaning we can come up with more money to spend on groceries and food, or we have to find a way to shop and cook in a way that allows us to stay within our current budget. So as I stated, one of the solutions to look at is whether or not we can afford to increase our grocery budget, right? I mean, if stuff is going to cost more, maybe we can find a way to simply budget more in that area so that we can continue shopping at the places we wanna shop and buying the things that we wanna buy. And for people who are lifelong savers, who are frugal, who are budgeters, they might think that sounds kind of crazy whenever there might be options on the table for staying at the same budget and simply shopping in a different way. But for some people, their time, their emotional health or mental health, you know, it's worth more to them than trying to crunch the numbers and completely change the way that they're doing things. Especially if there is a way that they can move some money around in their budget and redirect that to what they're spending on food. And sometimes people are, you know, willing to bring in a little more money. Sometimes maybe they'll take on an extra shift or they'll do an extra job that brings in a little bit of extra money so that they can add some to their overall household income. But I know there are some of us who 
who prefer to save as opposed to finding a way to add more money into the income. And maybe some people are in a position where they have to do that because they're pinching pennies as much as they possibly can in other areas of their budget and they really need to try to stay on top of the current food budget that they have. And if that is the case, if we want to continue to feed ourselves and our families and food costs do go up, obviously we're going to have to change some things. We're going to have to probably change the way that we shop and or the way that we cook or a combination of the both if we aren't going to put more money into our budget. So first off, changing the way that we shop. Um, we may have to shop at different stores. If you are a person who has an Aldi in your area and you have not gone in and tried it out, I highly recommend it. I know there are some people who are a little bit, you know, worried about trying Aldi because about 90% of what's in their store is house brand. I find that Aldi beats the competition over and over and over again, at least compared to the stores in my area. In fact, I've actually filmed a few videos where I compared the Aldi house brand to the Walmart and the Target house brands of items that we commonly buy. And Aldi came out ahead on almost every single item. And overall, they came out way ahead of Target. And they came out ahead of Walmart by anywhere from 11 to 12% Total. I will leave those videos linked in the description box below if you are interested in checking that out. But there might be some other stores in your area that perhaps you've never ventured into or, or you've never gotten online and looked at their sales to see if there are deals to be had that would be less than what you're paying for the stuff that you currently buy anyway. And speaking of sales, that is another great way to save money. If you are not shopping the weekly sales at your grocery stores that offer them, you might be missing out on some stock up prices. Typically speaking, your traditional supermarkets and even some big chain stores like Aldi are gonna have specials on certain items from week to week. So ideally, you will want to be buying those items and maybe even a few extra to tide you over until the next time they go on sale. Sometimes it's even helpful to take a look, especially at the produce and the meat options if you eat meat and see what's on sale and build a meal plan around that. And don't forget to check out the clearance if your stores offer that. I find some great deals on the bakery clearance rack at my Walmart and I even at my neighborhood Walmart have found rotisserie chickens fully cooked marked down to just three dollars and fifty cents which is a pretty fabulous deal if you are not buying generic meaning house brands especially of staples items that you routinely keep on hand in your pantry in your refrigerator in your freezer that you use as the building blocks of your meals if you are not buying those things in generic house brands you are probably paying a pretty big upcharge to buy the name brand now I'm not gonna lie there are things that we are brand loyal to but I find that the simpler items, the items that have the simpler ingredient lists, maybe just one or two ingredients, those items in the generic, they're pretty much going to be the same thing. You know, green beans are green beans. Oatmeal is oatmeal. Another way that we are changing up the way that we are shopping is by taking a good long look at the luxury items that we are buying. So I'm not talking about the meat and potatoes. I'm not talking about the fruits and vegetables. I'm talking about things like treats, like snacks, and for us, like soda. Soda is one of the things that I have noticed has gone up in price. It's not a necessity. It's not something we have to have. It's something we treat ourselves to, and it might be a little better for us if we drink less soda anyway, so maybe I need to look for some alternatives. Hence the iced tea maker that I picked up yesterday at Walmart. Now, I know you are probably also saying, but maybe you just spent money to save money. Yes, I did. And yes, I do know that you can make tea without an iced tea maker. I know how to make it on the stove using a tea concentrate. I know how to make it in the sun because my dad used to put a two quart glass jar full of water and tea bags on top of our minivan whenever we went into the ballpark to play softball when I was a kid. And whenever we came back out in the midday heat, my my dad had two quarts of sun tea that he could drink throughout the day. So yes, I do know that I did not have to purchase anything to make tea. I just decided that this was a good investment because I was more likely to make it using a contraption like this. So it cost me a little less than $20 for this iced tea maker. And I noticed that the Walmart brand tea bags that make a quart of tea each were $1.48. I could actually buy an even bigger package of that for a better value. Now you guys know that I love to crunch the numbers. So I'm going to do some mathing for you right here and share with you kind of my cost breakdown that I figured out for the tea and why I decided to go ahead and purchase this. There are 24 tea bags in here that make a quart each. I actually like to make my iced tea a little bit strong because it's gonna get watered down with the ice. So I use three tea bags that makes two quarts of tea. That means that I will be able to make 16 quarts of tea or 
four gallons basically of tea with this one box of tea bags that I got at Walmart. Notice too, it's the great value brand. It's the generic, it's the house brand. Four gallons of tea is gonna stretch over a lot of cups of iced tea that I can replace the sodas that I was drinking with. Now, does that mean I will never have a Diet Dr. Pepper again? No, I'll probably still have one occasionally, but I just mean we're gonna make the switch. This thing will pay for itself. It'll probably pay for itself in just the first couple of months that we have it. And from then on out, we'll be saving money by not stocking our drink fridge full of expensive sodas. And yes, we do drink tons of water. I know that tea isn't a necessity either. We could cut it out altogether, but I'm just being honest about the way that we are gonna live. And we are probably going to drink something besides water. So it might as well be tea. One of the other things we can do to kind of crunch the grocery budget is to think about changing the way that we cook. And I think I take it for granted sometimes that everybody knows how to cook. My Nana used to say, if you can read, you can cook because you know anybody can look at a recipe, right? But I still think that it's kind of intimidating for some people and maybe they're just buying a lot of ready-made meals or maybe going through the drive-through a lot because they don't even know where to start where cooking is concerned. But it doesn't have to be something really um, elaborate. You know, there are all kinds of resources out there. We've got Pinterest now. There are websites devoted to three ingredient, four ingredient, five ingredient recipes. There are all kinds of crock pot recipes out there if you have a slow cooker. And it doesn't have to be complete scratch cooking. I think a lot of people think, okay, I've got to learn how to make beans from dry beans. I've got to learn how to make my own bread. It doesn't have to start there. It can start with just doing the semi homemade thing, right? Utilizing some ready-made convenience ingredients, but adding in some cheaper ingredients. And so you don't have to start like completely from scratch, but learning how to cook a little bit more from scratch, even if not totally from scratch, can save us a lot of money because if we are buying ready-made meals, we are really paying extra for convenience. I actually saw a really good example of the paying for convenience thing as I was strolling through the grocery store yesterday. I'm, I'm about to talk about like a luxury item or a snack or a treat. So, you know, it's not necessarily a necessity, but it illustrates my point very well. I was strolling through Walmart looking at prices and I noticed they had some of this stuff and I have seen this around because I think there were some I bought a rebates on it recently, but I never could pull the trigger on it because even with the rebates, it just didn't seem like a great deal. It's the General Mills Golden Graham S'mores snacking mix. They have a few different kinds. And this is a great example of paying for convenience because when I look up here, it says this contains Golden Graham cereal, Cocoa Puff cereal, and marshmallows. And this little 5.5 ounce bag costs $2.98. This is the great value brand of Golden Grams. It was $1.98 for a 12 ounce box. This is the great value brand of the peanut butter and chocolate puffs. They didn't have the cocoa puffs. And honestly, I would probably do this anyway if I'm making this because I think this would take it up a notch. But basically close enough to cocoa puffs and it is 12.3 ounces, and it also was $1.98. Again, we're buying generics here, right? And then a 10 ounce bag of mini marshmallows, 88 cents in the Great Value brand. So I'm just gonna open all these packages and dump them into a big cereal container. Marshmallows! Do you guys like marshmallows? I know some people don't because they don't like the texture. Boom. Okay, so it's not mixed up very well, I know, but you get the idea. I mean, this is actually a big cereal container. This actually fits like two giant boxes of cereal in here, and it's filled all the way to the top with this snack mix that cost me $4.84 in ingredients, as opposed to this, which was $2.98. I wonder how much, hold on. Here you go. Which one looks like the better value? Okay, this one actually tastes better too. Like look at the marshmallows. In this one, they're like fluffy. And then this one, they're like cereal marshmallows or like kind of crunchy marshmallows. So you get the point, right? There's nothing wrong with a little convenience and some convenience items and some ready-made things that make life a little bit easier. You guys know that I have videos dedicated entirely to this principle because I will say, if we aren't budgeting money, we're budgeting our time. But if I am worried about my grocery budget, I'm definitely gonna take a long look at the things that I am buying that I could actually make for less. If I'm buying a frozen lasagna to feed my family, it might be possible for me to find a lasagna recipe 
for which the ingredients would cost me less. And even where the cereal trick is concerned, I paid $4.74 for the ingredients to make a giant box of cereal snack mix, but the cost of the ingredients to make a homemade batch of peanut butter or sugar or oatmeal cookies might be even less than what I spent making that treat. You know what I mean? Another way that I have changed up the way that I have been cooking over the past couple of years that has also helped lower our grocery budget a little bit, or at least keep it under control so that we can redirect that to other things that we want, is by using less meat. And really this applies to high cost ingredients across the board. If I can stretch those ingredients out across the recipe, and, you know, use a half a pound of ground beef in my spaghetti sauce instead of a full pound, I find that my family doesn't really notice the difference, especially if I am adding like extra vegetables or maybe a little more starch or substituting, you know, an extra can of beans in that crock pot full of soup to provide some protein instead of using all of the meat that, that I would have used years ago. That can actually save us some money because meat tends to be one of the most expensive things that I purchase. And by stretching it out across the recipe and bulking that recipe up with other items that are less expensive, but still provide a lot of filling nutrition, I can save a lot of money in my grocery budget. And my final tip will come as no surprise to people who watch my channel regularly, and that is to make sure that we are being good stewards of the food that we have and using everything up. I have so many videos dedicated to this specific principle, and even times when I have worked with an almost completely empty refrigerator, it still managed to come up with something that I can feed my family. There are so many times whenever I think, oh, we don't have any food and I've got to go to the grocery store. And then when I take a good look around, I can actually come up with something and delay that grocery trip. And anytime I am delaying a grocery trip by a day or two or three and just trying to make do with the items that we have on hand and making sure that I'm using up food before it goes bad. If I'm delaying that trip, I'm delaying spending money and all of those delays over the course of the year add up to several weeks when I didn't go out and grocery shop and I ended up using food that we have on hand instead. That's a good way to, to make sure that we are getting the best bang for our buck with the food that we are buying. Okay, you guys, that's what I have for you today. I hope that that was helpful. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I had more answers for you guys, but I hope that what I have shared with you maybe gives you some ideas for how you can tighten up that grocery budget or maybe some ideas for moving forward, how you can address that issue if food prices are rising in your area. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be sure to check in with another video very soon. Thank you.